Today we're going to be talking about the total solar eclipse that happens on October 2nd, 2024. It's happening at 2.49 p.m. and it'll be at 10 degrees of Libra. What is a total solar eclipse? A solar eclipse is a time of new energy. It's a new beginning, but it's not just any fresh start. It's like a powerful, positive fresh start. It's about transformation. It's about change. We are kind of like when a class is done, we're just erasing the whole whiteboard and we're going to write something completely new. We've got a completely new class coming in. These are very faded moments because they are so powerful. It is a cosmic redirection. If you have been off the path that you are supposed to be on or that your soul is calling you to be on, these sort of eclipses and big astrological moments sort of say, hey, no, we're going to redirect you over here. So yes, a cosmic redirection toward our destiny. This is a makeover, a time for positive change for us. It is like our astrological glow up. And then when we talk about this particular solar eclipse in Libra, what is it asking us to do? So solar eclipses are about new beginnings. Lunar eclipses are about big endings. But then you have the nodes. So this node, this eclipse is conjunct the south node, which makes it very... I don't want to say counterintuitive, but it really takes a lot for us to synthesize it all together. So first we have the sun, the moon and Mercury, which is in Libra. Uh, this is a new moon. Mercury is asking us to think about new ways of interacting. Libra is about interaction. What new ways can we interact? Where this is happening is going to show how you want to interact in your life. But what new ways can we interact with other people? How can we do so in a pleasant way? What new ways can we bring aesthetics and art and socialization into our life? How can we be more Libra-like? We all collectively, no matter what sign you are, no matter where this is happening, the universe is saying, how can we be more Libra-like towards each other? And with Mercury here, right, right so close to it, we are thinking of new ways. This is also in an air sign, so this is very cerebral. You're going to be doing a lot of thinking. How can I socialize better? How can I be kinder? How can I be a better partner in my romantic relationship? How can I be a better friend? How can I reach out to people more? How can I have more grace? Stuff like that. But it's also conjunct the South Node and then the North Node is in Aries. It's asking us to think of new ways to interact with people while not forgetting who we are, not leaving ourselves behind or abandoning ourselves. A lot of times if you have any Libra placements, I have a Libra moon, so I definitely understand this. You want to interact so much with a person and you care so much about socialization and the relationship that we sort of abandon ourselves. Think of any time in your life where you've abandoned yourself because for the sake of a relationship, and that could be a friendship or a sibling of any kind. Maybe you wanted to go to the Cheesecake Factory and they wanted to go to Olive Garden, but you do not throw your bid in the hat. You do not, you know, step up and say what you want because you are trying to appease them. Libra is can very much be an appeaser, a people pleaser, and they can take it too far. How many times has a coworker asked you for a ride home and you don't really want to do it because you're tired or you don't have enough gas or, you know, maybe they never give you a ride home, but you just do it to appease. You do it to please, to keep the pleasantries and the niceness in the air, even though you are suppressing your own self, you're appeasing that person and you're keeping the relationship fine, but you're not happy. And really for any relationship to be fine, the both people have to be happy. So it is asking us, how can we interact in a way where I am appeasing the other person, I'm making, I'm caring about the relationship that we have, but I also care about myself. Maybe using my example you could say to that coworker, hey uh i can drop you off close at a bus stop but i'm kind of tired and i really want to go home or you could say you know i would really like if you gave me 10 bucks for gas money that would really help me it would really go a long way something like that where you're interacting but you're also valuing your own needs you're not throwing yourself to the side or under for the sake of this that's what is new about this because in the past, you may have, and we all may have been interacting in a way that puts others first. If your spouse constantly wants to watch football on Sunday and you want to watch, you know, a girly, a girly girl show on Sunday, but you never really speak up or say anything, say, hey, maybe we can alternate every other Sunday. That's the new way 
the eclipse of interacting Libra. You've thought about it with your Mercury and you're still valuing yourself, which is Aries. And how the South Node comes in is we are letting go and we are shedding the idea that in order to interact, in order to have relationships or be popular, we constantly have to be a chameleon and appease and, and bow down to other people and what they want and their desires and that we cannot show up as ourselves because that's just not true. This eclipse is really calling on us to think about how we can do that. No matter where you have this eclipse happening in your chart, the entire eclipse is squaring Mars and Cancer, which is at Mars and Cancer is at 15 degrees. Mars is very aggressive and Cancer is very emotional and it's a water based sign. So it's no wonder these two, you know, energies are not really getting along. But Mars is, and a Mars and Cancer is very emotional. There is an emotion in the air, a sensitivity in the air, a quickness to react, a, quick, a quickness to cry, a quickness to have an outburst. Um, not to say that you're irritable, but there is emotion here. And it's asking, a Cancer is very biased. I've always seen them be very biased. Libra is asking you, to not be quick to emotion. The the eclipse conjunct Mercury is saying, hey, let's be peaceful, let's be fair, let's be unbiased, let's think about, and Mars is more like, let's feel, let's emote, let's get this out of me. So these two energies are not getting along, but I would argue that we should all follow the lessons of the eclipse. And if you are feeling emotional or intense or frustrated about something or sensitive, we call on the wisdom of the eclipse and say, how can I think through this in a logical, rational way, in a way that does not harm my relationships that I've been building with other people? So now we're gonna get into the 12 signs and how it can affect you. I would say that, I wanna put a huge disclaimer. Most, we are doing this from the sign if it's starting at zero degrees, which a lot of people's ascendant does not and also the farther up north or south you are your houses are different sizes so just because you really have to look at where what house this is happening in for you the ascendant is a guideline but if you have intercepted houses it could be in a completely different house so make sure you check that specifically and watch that rising as well so you can see exactly where things are happening for you that's my disclaimer but anyway on to the signs all right, so for Aries, this is gonna be happening in your seventh house. There have maybe been a feeling in the air that there have been relationships, could be friendships, any kind of relationship, but mostly one-on-one -on -one romantic relationship that you feel like may have been taking too much of your time, too much of your energy, and too much of your independence. And so this eclipse is asking you to bring in new energy into your seventh house. How can I interact with others, interact with my partner, while still holding true to who I am. This is especially important because Aries is about the self. Aries is the first sign. You cannot forget yourself. And a lot of times you may get into a relationship and start to become more Libra-like or definitely attracting a lot of Libras. It's not necessarily that you will leave a relationship behind in order to pursue yourself, although you could. It just means it's an, I don't want to be so fatalistic and scare people because it doesn't always happen like that. Um, it is independent to you. Maybe you have a new way of interacting. You could start a new relationship. This is about new beginnings. This is new energy in this house. So somebody could come in that is new. I would say definitely get out there, start dating. This is a powerful time to meet somebody. And maybe you maintain a sense of independence for the first time while you're in this relationship. Maybe you used to be the person who stays up all night talking to somebody that you're dating and then you're tired for work. You put that over yourself and maybe this time you say hey i need to get some sleep i enjoy talking to you but it's 10 o'clock i gotta get ready for bed it's a way of interacting while maintaining who you are this is also in your first house maybe you have been a person in the past who tries to dress like the person you're dating or sort of become mold into the person you're dating and maybe you're like, no, this time I'm going to be myself. I'm going to, Aries loves the shortcuts and the red. I'm going to be bold. I'm going to be me while still valuing you. Maybe. And I think we've all had a friend at one point in time who every time they get in a relationship, they disappear. Maybe you're saying this time, hey, I am going to be in a relationship, but I have a new way of thinking about it. I'm still going to hold on to myself. 
by maintaining my friendships with other people or still showing up to the hobbies like if you're in a boxing class i'm still going to maintain who i am while i'm talking to you you are welcoming new relationships and you are welcoming new kinds of relationships not just one-on-one -on -one. i would say definitely be open to going out socializing meeting friends meeting friends of friends joining a group really good time to get out there on dating apps and just gussy up and just go out and see what happens because there's a lot of energy coming your way this is like a window had opened up in a hot room this is like a bunch of air coming in and it feels good so you have mars in cancer which is transiting your fourth house and this is squaring your stellium so the mars and the fourth is going to want you to bring a lot of energy a lot of attention and passion to your home you may be wanting to or needing to fix your home up mars is a cantankerous aggressive energy maybe something is happening in your home mars and cancer I've seen a lot of leaking, could be a leaky pipe or a leaky faucet or something like that. Um, speaking of Mars and Cancer, we actually have a leak in, in my house right now. So it's that could be happening for a lot of people. You are putting a lot of energy at home. Mars is saying, hey, no, pay attention over here. And then the Libra is like, no, 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 but we got to pay attention over here. And that's why these two things are not really getting along right now. You are going to want to be spending time at home working on the things that you need to work on. However, if you're at home, you are not outside socializing and meeting new people. You are inside and seeing the same people. Or if you live alone, you are seeing no one. So that's why these energies are not getting along. It could also be that you emotionally want to put a lot of effort into spending time with your family. You might want to try to be seeing them more. The holiday times are coming up maybe you're calling more and organizing them there is something in you that may want to call more attention to the people if not the actual physical home and in that case again you are still inside and you are still seeing people that are very familiar to you that you already know and there's nothing bad and there's nothing wrong with that but Libra is saying like, we got to get out. We got to get some new people, new friend groups, new relationships in our lives. What I would suggest to you is again, we want to value the wisdom of the eclipse. Libra is about balance. Strike the balance in whatever way you can. As far as being present in your home and giving attention to your physical home and family and getting out there. Maybe if there's something wrong, you will or you have a home project you're working on you can work on that on saturday but on sunday you say hey we're gonna go watch the game i know football season has just started or maybe you organize game night with your family on thursdays but on saturdays that could be a day to hang with your friends there is a way to find balance it doesn't feel like it emotionally because of square that tension is in the air but it is possible and the eclipse with mercury there especially is saying think how can we strike a balance and there is always a way if you think hard enough this eclipse is supporting your jupiter and gemini in the third you are feeling super sociable right now you really want to get out in the town and go to local places your local coffee shop a bar down the street that you've never been to and you want to talk you want to talk to your friends you want to text you want to post on social media you want to talk to strangers you want to have these conversations this is happening in like a good place for you this is like a nice setup for you guys because your gemini is really bringing you joy and getting out which is really supporting your libra and once you're thinking with that mercury you can figure out how to appease your mars and cancer on october 11th your pluto well everyone's pluto it's going to be going direct your pluto is at 29 degrees of capricorn and it will be inching ever closer to your 11th house this really goes hand in hand with the theme of we are having a transformation in the house of friends what you guys are and it's going to be an aquarius so this will be felt somewhat by everyone but very strongly by you this really goes with the theme of letting go of old friendships or old groups that do not work or bringing a transformation to the friends and groups that you're in how can you be more authentically yourself what ways what things do you need to change why do you need to change them what things have you been shoving down that you've been feeling about your friends or your groups that need to come up now and need to be addressed letting go of friends and groups that don't work 
keeping the ones that are there strong and then the eclipse is bringing in new energy and it's like okay now who else who's like the next round of people that i can interact with so my soul can continue to learn and grow so taurus this is going to be in your sixth house this is pretty cool you will be thinking mercury of new ways to interact the eclipse and libra with your co-workers and with your job and with just your everyday work routines and your health you may be talking to people at work that you have always seen but never really talked to before you might be getting some new co-workers a new round of like new hires or maybe it's people you've always seen but you never really talked to you are being friendlier more sociable you are bringing huge leaper energy at work if you've been arguing with someone or things have not been going so great, you are really going to be thinking of ways. How can I interact better? How can I make this more peaceful, more pleasant, more smooth? It is the holiday time. Maybe you are organizing events or there are no events hosted by your company where you guys have like a Christmas party. And you can just talk and get to know people in a way that you have not before. This is also new energy around work itself. Maybe you have a new job. Maybe you move to a new department or you are put on a new project. There is something new in your everyday and you really enjoy that. This is also the house of your health, your schedule, your routine. Maybe you have new routine, a new schedule, a new way of waking up every day and tackling your day to day. Something that is appeasing to you, makes you feel happy, you feel peaceful. Maybe you add more art and elegance and beauty because that's the Libra to your everyday. Maybe when you get up in the morning and you're brushing your teeth, you're doing your routine, you're lighting a candle or some incense or maybe you're playing some pleasant jazz music. Your everyday is becoming sweet and cute and nice and Libra-like and it's very enjoyable to you. We are leaving behind, because we got the South Note here, the idea that we have to focus so much on routine and we have to make a to-do list and it's got to be so monotonous and so robotic we are leaving that behind we are also leaving behind the idea that we cannot acknowledge where the north node is our 12th house you can definitely have routine structure health and be grounded in your everyday to-do list while still honoring our 12th house self these are very very opposite houses 12th house is boundless 12th house, there is no time. There is no to-do list because where's the pen? Who cares where the pen is? We want to meditate and we want to daydream and we want to get lost in music and, and go for a walk at one o'clock in the morning and look at the stars. That is our 12th house. And you are letting go of the idea that you have to be so rigid that you can't allow that into your life. You can do both. You can have a schedule and allow yourself to wander at times you can schedule the wandering you're thinking of new ideas and ways where yeah i can i can have my i can have it all the balance i can be a structured routine disciplined person but somebody who also has an imagination is artistic is our dream is dreamy and those two things don't have to contradict each other it's very important that we look at venus because venus is the depositor of the eclipse so all this energy is in libra we go to the ruling planet which is venus which is in scorpio transiting your seventh house this is a great great time for you to be dating right now you may even start to date a co-worker or find love through work they are connected here this is a great time to get a makeover this is a great time to gussy up this is a great time to get out there and socialize you are bringing your venus to everyone that you meet you're becoming more venus like when you interact with people socializing with friends going out to maybe watch a game or heading to any sort of social event it's going to bring you a lot of joy right now and libra is really amped up so the more you water that flower the bigger it's going to get the more you socialize the more people you're going to meet you're really loving flirting right now you're really loving dressing up you're following social cues and you have social grace right now and people are super super receptive of that they see that and they sense that radiating off you um immediately even more than you know you usually do 
the v venus is also but your chart ruler so this is very very important to you it's a great time to get out there to meet somebody you can go on dating apps but i would say socializing is the best you're also especially receptive to dating yourself right now sometimes i think all of us get in these periods where we're not really interested in dating but no you're really your soul is calling you to get out there and to meet someone even if it doesn't go anywhere even if you just go on a few dates here and there this is really this time of year is really calling for you to do that you also have jupiter which is transiting the second right now which is adding to this you are feeling really really good about yourself your self-confidence is up your money is up and when our money is up what do we tend to do most people tend to go shopping and they want to you know they want to buy luxury items sure but they want to splurge want to go out to maybe a nicer restaurant you may go out more than you usually do and you're feeling good you may be buying yourself nice things terrain type of things again Taurus rising buying perfume maybe some jewelry things that feel good on the skin and then once you hop from the jupiter over to the venus and then you're getting invited out and you're socializing so it's really really a good time to meet people and to try to meet a romantic partner venus is also in a grand trine with saturn and mars you got mars in the third right now you are spending a lot of energy learning, talking, getting out there, socializing, going around in your town, talking to your family. This is Mars and Cancer in the third. Talking to your siblings or your cousins. You're putting a lot of energy into talking to them right now. Make sure you don't fight with them because this is Mars, but you're putting a lot of energy into socializing with them. You also have a trine between Venus and Saturn in the 11th. Saturn is in your 11th right now. You may be feeling dissatisfied or particularly critical of your friends. Certain, it could be certain friends, it could be all friends or some friend groups right now. You're looking at them, you know, Saturn is the opposite of Neptune, which is rose colored glasses. I would say Saturn is gray colored glasses. You are especially critical, kind of irritated. You're really looking at them like, do I really want to be your friend? Any friendships that are not serving you, that are not growing you, that are bringing you down, need to be shed at this time. Any toxic friendship dynamics, even if you do need to keep the friend, you need to let those go and say, what new ways of interacting the Eclipse and Libra can I do to keep you as my friend? But even though Saturn in the 11th can be a time of loneliness or you may feel like you're losing some friends and that hurts. It's still trining the Venus. It's saying they, they're getting along. The Saturn is saying, hey, we kind of need to do some cleanup of friends, but we're welcoming the new. And the Venus is looking at the Saturn saying, I know you're kind of lonely over there, but I've got some new energy for you. So it's a great time to focus on not just romantic partners, but friendships as well meeting new people and being open and receptive to that gemini this is happening in your fifth house so this is so much fun for you guys the fifth house is about our ego our creativity fun the things that we think are fun um and our biggest most fun creation of all which is our kids all these areas of life are bringing you so much joy right now you've got a lot of new energy coming in here i would say this is a great time to interact with your kids if you have any even if they're older or kids in general, maybe you work with kids. I know the school year has just started, so this could be possible. You're a teacher, you have Gemini rising, and maybe you are just finding joy in getting to know the kids in your class. This eclipse is asking you to approach this area of your life, the things that bring you fun with a new energy, but you are balancing it out with our 11th house. Maybe you are a mother and you have enrolled your kid in soccer and karate and they're in you know some other after school program and you enjoy that you enjoy taking your kid to do all these things and you enjoy seeing them be happy but maybe you forgot that there's a guitar in your garage that you've been wanting to pick up a personal hope personal dream um, or maybe you don't get to see your friends that much because you are always the fifth house is taking all your energy Fifth house is also about dating. So maybe you are dating a lot and you are letting your friends go. Not letting them go, but being the kind of person who, when you're dating someone, like your friends don't hear from you until you're single again and then you meet someone and then they don't hear from you again. 
maybe you were doing that or have been doing that and Libra eclipse is like how can we balance all the fun things of the fifth house and the things we enjoy of the fifth house while still having a new attitude and a new energy and saying I can do that and I can honor my own personal hopes and dreams my own personal wishes my own personal friends that don't have anything to do with the people in the fifth house that's what Libra with and with the Mercury here is calling and asking you to do to think about how to strike that balance because it is very possible that being said there are new opportunities for dating so i would definitely say get out there definitely get on those apps definitely have fun um you're gonna meet this person if there is someone for you to meet at a concert or while you were out just laughing with your friends whatever you're doing that is having fun that's when that person is going to energetically see you and sense you and be drawn to you. And when they are, we will remember our North Node that I still also have to remember my friends and my own dreams while I'm welcoming this in. And it's a very nice balance that can be struck. When we look at the dispositor of the eclipse, which is Venus, Venus is very powerful because it is the ruler of the eclipse. It is in your sixth house. So this could be a time of interacting with coworkers better, maybe dating some of the coworkers. Maybe you are with the holidays coming up at some sort of Christmas or holiday party and you meet someone. It could be a friend, but it could also be something flirtatious as well. Somebody that you're interested in romantically. You are feeling good and you are feeling happy. Maybe that helps you just have a smoother interaction at work, a smoother interaction with your coworkers and with your everyday day-to-day -day job. You do have Saturn transiting, Saturn and Neptune transiting your 10th right now. So think something kind of murky, maybe kind of tough, maybe you and your boss not really seeing eye to eye right now, or you know, you're maybe at odds with the corporate side of your job. You just work and the authority at work has not been smooth. And even though Venus is not in the 10th, it is in the 6th of the people we see every day. So that might kind of help smooth it over. I would say Libra also calls you, again, this eclipse to take a new way of looking at how to interact with others. It's in your 5th house, but overall, think of what the Mercury conjunct the eclipse here. What are some new ways I can interact at work that make it more peaceful and better and so that my everyday is smoother and more pleasant for myself. Jupiter is transiting your first right now. This really is great and it really adds a bit of spark to this eclipse which is happening in your fifth house because with Jupiter in the first, there's a lot of self-confidence. It's not ego like the fifth, but it is just a confidence um, in ourselves and in our ability. This definitely adds to that vibe of you wanting to have fun right now and because you're feeling good about yourself, because you're feeling optimistic, that's a better way to put it, uh, about yourself and about your life and your capabilities, it's definitely a time to get out there and chase some of those dreams you have, the North Node and the 11th, something that you've been desiring but you have been putting off or procrastinating. This is a really good time for you guys to feel that confidence to like get you started and, and push you through. And these could be even things related to fun. If there's a concert you've been wanting to go to or a live taping of a show that you've been wanting to see, you feel that newness with the fifth house. You're striking that balance of personal dreams with the 11th and the Jupiter and the first. It's giving you the optimism like, yeah, I can do it. So it's a very enjoyable, fun eclipse for Gemini. This eclipse is square Mars in the second for you. This is a time of increased spending. This is the time of buying luxury items. The new iPhone 16 came out. Um, you guys might be eyeing that. But Mars can also be damage or danger or aggression to these items. So buy a case. It could be something as simple as that or get a warranty on any of the luxury things that you're buying. You are feeling good. You are liking to spend. Make sure you don't overspend because your sixth house is saying, hey, let's be practical. Let's cross you know let's use this money and cross off this bill this bill this bill so that's how these two energies are not super getting along here but overall it's still a feeling of feeling very good at the time of spending and the time of socializing cancer this is happening in your fourth house this is so cool this is asking you to think mercury about new ways of interacting eclipse and libra with your family and with your home 
maybe you are reaching out and calling people more maybe people are calling you more it could be a reconnection between you and somebody it doesn't really matter who calls who a family member that you haven't spoken to in a while you are feeling this new energy like i really want to spend more time with my family which makes sense because you are a cancer rising but it's just like rejuvenated within you you may want to do uh organize social activities in the home organizing a game night uh rekindling sunday dinner maybe you guys have fallen off of that the holiday times are coming up maybe you are starting to call people that you haven't talked to in a while to think whose house are we going to be doing this at where are we going to be socializing in the home who's going to be there this makes you feel really really happy and really really good this eclipse is also calling us to think of ways that we can socialize with our family and invite them into our home and be in their home have them in our lives without sacrificing the 10th house because the north node is in the 10th house you don't need to sacrifice work in order to be with your family and you don't need to sacrifice your family in order to be to work be at work and this sounds very counterintuitive because obviously when you are at work you're not at home and you're interacting with your co-workers and not your family nobody brings their family to work you know libra is asking us to strike that balance so it could be something as simple as hey i'm always off on wednesdays and so I would like to do something with the family on Wednesdays, or maybe you just are calling people more on a specific day when you know you both have time off to build that relationship and build that rapport. Or maybe you say, I don't need to shed, I need to shed the idea that because my family's here, I can't put in extra work. Maybe you tell your family, hey, we've been, I'm happy, we're spending a lot of time together, but mommy or daddy or whatever, I need two hours on Sunday night to send these emails out. But you keep that work within those two hours. And then outside of those two hours, you're interacting. You're finding the balance to be able to do both. And it really makes you happy. This is new energy. This is an artistic energy in our home. You could be moving furniture around. And again, like I said, the holidays are coming up. So you could be preparing for that. You could be redecorating your home and you could be organizing and you know doing like a fall cleaning if you will in a way that allows more people to be there maybe you're buying more chairs or a new couch set or something where you feel like there's going to be more people able to come visit you and to socialize with you if you're having a game night but nobody has anywhere to sit or there's no table so you're thinking in terms of that i'd say for you guys having a planner or some kind of schedule where you really actually schedule in family time and schedule in work time would be the most effective thing you could do and gain from this eclipse. Now, when we look at Venus, which is the dispositor, the ruler of the eclipse, Venus is in your fifth house. So you're really feeling yourself right now. You really think you're funny. You're really feeling your beauty and your vibe. You're looking in the mirror. You're liking what you're seeing. Therefore, you really like to get out there and socialize. You like to, you're becoming more Leo-like when you are socializing with people, you are recognizing how great you really are and you want to share that with everyone that you interact with. This could be a great time for reaching out to your kids, even if you have older kids, reaching out to them and saying, hey, Thanksgiving's coming up, Halloween, Christmas is coming up and thinking about games and ways to make that fun is really something that you're enjoying doing right now. You are also enjoying dating this is a nice time to get out there and to date new energy in libra venus in the fifth this really is a great time to meet someone you can also do something creative with your kids or with your family that you really enjoy maybe you guys get together and paint maybe if you have younger kids you're building model airplanes or you could be doing tiktok dances or something where you're being creative and having fun with your kids where you're being creative and having fun with your family. Mars is transiting your first house right now and it is square the eclipse. So you are, like I said, feeling yourself and you're recognizing the balance between work and family, but you could be feeling uh, the energy of Mars on your ascendant. You could be feeling a little bit irritable right now. You could be feeling a little bit aggressive right now, a little emotional right now. You could be feeling an excess of physical energy where maybe you're getting up earlier. Maybe you need to just get that out. Go for a run in the morning. Do some push-ups. Mars is like revving us up and we have to make sure we give it an outlet. 
you could also be feeling more aggressive and assertive and that doesn't necessarily that's not necessarily a bad thing you can be feeling more aggressive and assertive about who you are and what direction you are going in life maybe you have been quiet about some things for a while and now you're like no i don't like this or no i don't want to do this anymore this is at odds with your eclipse in libra in the fourth and especially because the mars is in cancer you could you may be standing up to your family in some way you may be having some disagreements with some family in some way where you feel like no like i gotta assert what i think and libra is like no we have to get along and that's why these two you know planets these two configurations are not getting along right now because this is happening you want to go to the eclipse and gain the wisdom from it the eclipse is saying how can we get along better with family if you can think because the mercury is right there on how to do that it can really calm your mars down while still allowing you to stick up for yourself and assert what you want to do maybe you're saying hey i want to have thanksgiving at my house this year we always do it at this person's house this year stuff like that you can do while still being peaceful and pleasant is for you to think about how to do that. Leo, this is very, very powerful for you guys because the sun is your chart ruler and the sun is part of the eclipse and it is transiting Libra right now. You will be feeling more Libra-like and this is happening in your third house. You are going to be feeling very nice, pleasant and kind and sociable in your third house with your neighbors, in your neighborhood, with your siblings and with your cousins maybe you are reaching out to them more you are calling them they are calling you you could be waving or saying hello to a neighbor maybe helping someone sh pick up the leaves off the ground or something like that you are also really enjoying getting to know your community i think we overlook the third house a lot getting to know the local coffee shop that's two blocks from our house that we always pass we're getting a sandwich from a local deli that isn't far from us a lot of times we overlook the beauty that is a couple blocks around us finding a new library or a new park space where you can go a new trail that is near our house you are really finding these new things in your neighborhood and you're really enjoying them they are very pleasant very beautiful uh really think about the park maybe you find a local garden or something like that that you just find artistic and pretty and it it makes you happy and the eclipse is asking you to bask in that beauty while not forgetting that you can still go far i can still enjoy my neighborhood my cousins my siblings my neighbors and i can still take a trip i can still go far away i can always come back i don't have to forget where i come from i don't have to forget these people or this place in order to want to explore and i don't have to not explore in order to give energy to this place this eclipse is really reminding us that we can have it all the third house and the ninth house are very opposite the third house is local short trips the ninth house is far away foreign trips you can have it all think about with the mercury here ways to strike that balance because it is in libra of those two energies those two polarities in your life there is also new energy in the third house and we are letting go of some old things with the south node here maybe a neighbor is moving and you're getting a new neighbor maybe you move and you have new neighbors you may not move far away but maybe you move to a different side of the same city a different side of town maybe you are letting go of an argument that you've been having with some siblings or with some cousins and you are bringing a new energy hey i know we argued about whatever but let's let it go and have a new way of interacting with these people you've also got venus transiting the fourth year and it is in scorpio scorpio is definitely known for holding grudges maybe you are letting go of grudges and learning how to be sweeter with family definitely playing on the siblings and cousins theme here if there's been any disagreements this is going to be a great great time for you and for them to reach out be the bigger person if this applies to you and see i'm sure they'd be receptive to finding some sort of balance or compromise and moving on from any sort of conflict it's really going to make you guys both feel very happy right now you do have mars transiting cancer in the 12th which is squaring the eclipse your mars is your
your energy and it's really tired right now it really kind of wants to lay down it really wants to be alone and when you do have energy you want to work alone if there's any project just as much as you can around the house you want to work on it by yourself if you're painting the room you want everybody to get out and you want to paint the room you really want to meditate you really want to relax you really want to de-stress and decompress you really want to head head first into being a 12th house right now you really are working mars at being a pisces right now and this is not getting along with the third house eclipse which is like hey let's go outside and meet these new people and go over here and go over there and when we're done we're going to go over here the mars is like no we're not doing that right now so this eclipse is calling on you when we use the wisdom of the eclipse to strike a balance between both and that's really this whole what this entire eclipse is about find a way to go and explore your town to socialize with neighbors siblings and cousins and to enjoy the short trips that you take every day make them pleasant and enjoyable while also allowing time for yourself to stay home and reset and relax at the end of the day or maybe at the beginning of the day where you meditate and sort of come to a peaceful place before you do all that gemini like socializing or allow yourself to take breaks maybe you call the cousin or maybe they call you and they want to talk for two hours and you say hey i'm a little bit busy right now and maybe you shorten the conversation to 30 minutes you're still giving yourself but you're allowing the mars really needs to reset before it crosses into the first strike that balance we have jupiter in the 11th this is a great time to chase some travel dreams the 11th is our personal goals and dreams and hopes and wishes and jupiter is about travel maybe there is a dream trip that you've always wanted to take and the north node is like yeah i want to pull you to go to foreign places and i think now is just a great time for you guys to think about organizing that even if it's something you do in the future and this doesn't have much to do with the eclipse but this is just an important planetary transit for you guys you guys have saturn and neptune which are transiting your eighth right now the eighth house is a very deep very intense house and these are intense planets saturn and neptune are asking you to really go deep into your emotional world and ask yourself how do you feel on the inside independent of the eclipse how do you feel what makes you happy what makes you sad how can you get to a place where you're out of emotional turmoil and you are at emotional stability saturn here may have you feeling like you cannot share you cannot open up you cannot be intimate even if it's in an emotional way or in a sexual way you feel like you cannot share that right now you are just sort of closed off um, shared resources you are feeling maybe bound by them because you are already sharing or maybe you feel like no I'm, I'm not in the mood to share right now the root of that is an emotional turmoil that you are trying to work through Neptune is also here and it is a bit confusing how should I react how should I share how intimate should I be how much should I share of my body how much should I share of my life experience with somebody should I share my finances or maybe there's been some disillusion or some trouble. Maybe there's an unexpected or sudden tax bill that comes up. Or maybe you have a shared account and you realize that someone has been spending more out of the account than you thought. Um, and it is causing you some emotional pain. Really go inside and reflect about ways in which you can get to a place of emotional stability that is independent of the eclipse. Uh, however, I just thought it was important because it's happening for you guys right now. Virgo, this is happening, this eclipse is happening in your second house. You are thinking of all new ways of how we interact with our money and what do we value and why do we value it? Yes, we value things, but do we value ourselves? What are the things that we value about ourselves? You may be thinking of new opportunities, new ways to make money new income, new attitudes towards saving. Maybe you make a savings chart or a, a savings calendar. Maybe you have a savings challenge. Something like that will be very interesting to you. You are thinking of new ways to interact with your money. Maybe you get 
an app that tracks what you spend and you realize, hmm, I spent $45 at Starbucks this week alone. Maybe I can think of a new way to interact with my money in a positive way, something that brings us joy. The South Node is here, so we are shedding old ways that are not working for us and not bringing us joy. Maybe we have new ways of thinking about ourselves. We may look in the mirror and start to say affirmations, pleasant things to ourselves. We may have pleasant thoughts about ourselves right now. That's what the eclipse is asking you to do. It's asking you to let go of selfishness and holding on to valuing things that you don't really need to value. What are you valuing that, or have you been valuing that hasn't been helping you? The North Node is in the eighth. Maybe you are wanting to share or bringing a new attitude to sharing. It could be that you have been very closed off, very terrain, and maybe you have been resistant to joining finances with a spouse, but you realize there may be some benefit in doing so recently. Maybe you have been sharing with your spouse and you haven't really been liking that. You haven't really been liking what they're doing. So maybe you say, you know what, let's go back to the second and I'm going to have a new way of interacting with my own money. Either way, Libra is calling you to think, Mercury, about a way to strike a balance, Libra, where you are valuing yourself and what you have while recognizing when and where and how it is healthy to share with others. And that stuff makes you very happy. It feels good. It feels new to shed the old way because the old way wasn't working for you. When we look at the dispositor, the ruler of this eclipse, it is Venus. So Venus is transiting your third house right now. You may be enjoying spending a little bit more money, socializing with uh, friends, neighbors, siblings, cousins. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say friends. Neighbors, siblings, and cousins. Maybe you are spending a little bit money, a little bit more money on local trips. If you live, like I live in Philly, and maybe you want to go to a New York or a DC, you're not going far, you're not spending a lot, but you're giving a little extra padding and a little extra joy to our third house, our local trips. It could be that you get a new car, you could refinance a car, it more could just be your cleaning up, you know, zhuzhing up the car you already have. Maybe you take it to the car wash and you get a detail, and that just makes you feel good spending money maybe you just get a new steering wheel cover or you know the little license plate with some rhinestones something like that you are enjoying these short trips across it and, and it's good it's good for you to take care of your car right now because you are doing these short trips across town and that just makes the whole experience more pleasant you're having explicit pleasant experiences around town saturn and neptune are transiting your seventh and they are not directly related to the eclipse in any strong way but this is on an angular house for you this is in the seventh house and so i just thought it was important to talk about you may be dealing with some very intense emotions right now around interacting with other people and even though they are not tied by an aspect to the eclipse it still carries the theme of the eclipse because there's so much energy in Libra. And then this is the seventh house. You could be feeling right now that you are at a crossroads or a bit confused about what to do with some one-on-one -on -one relationships. It could be friendships, but a lot of times it's that one-on-one -on -one romantic partnership. You could be feeling like confused about, confused, which is Neptune and the Saturn, which is the lack or the restriction. Why am I not getting partners? Why am I not getting along with the partners that I have? Why do my relationships seem to be filled with disillusionment? Why do they seem to be few and far between? Or why do they seem to end quickly? These are things that are really, really pulling at you. We are really going to be thinking about them for a while. Especially the Neptune. Um, Saturn is about to go into Aries. <clears throat> but it is here. You may have been feeling for a time some pessimistic energy about dating about one-on-one -on -one. you may be feeling like your partners um are lying to you or they are deceptive or maybe you just feel like they haven't been deceptive but you're just like how come i didn't see all these red flags in the beginning i mean these are common human experiences so don't beat yourself up these are things that you're thinking about right now this eclipse is asking you 
to think Mercury of new ways of interacting with people. What are some new ways that you can break old patterns? Look at your past relationships. What are patterns between each relationship? What things did you miss in each one? What, what negative traits did you do in each one? What are new ways where you can honor yourself because the North Node is in Aries, but still have these people here? We all want to, you know, have these, we all want to have one-on-one -on -one relationships, but we want them to be positive and to add to our growth and not cause us confusion or pain. Even though this may be, has been a painful time for you in terms of dating, there's a lot to learn here, and I would say to still remain optimistic. That's why the eclipse is in Libra. You can try to go out and maybe not date, but if you want to, or you can just try to socialize as you try to paint a clearer picture of what it means to interact with another. That is a huge life lesson that you are learning right now and will be learning for a while. Um, and so expand on that with this eclipse, this pleasant social eclipse. Libra, this is in your first house. This is like super, 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 super charged for you guys. This is a super new moon, new moon and it is in your sign with Mercury's in the first. Um, but as a Libra ascendant, as you know, everything is sort of flip-flopped and then it adds a double layer because the new moon is conjunct a south node, which is about letting go. So as I was trying to parse up through all this and synthesize it, you are thinking of new ways of bringing in energy into your life where you can be yourself and be who you are while also honoring relationships. You may at times, because you had the descendant in Aries, attract aggressive partners. And Libra, we very much, because I'm a moon in Libra, we very much mold ourselves to other people. We kind of start to speak like them, we kind of dress like them, move like them. We are a chameleon and we know how to subconsciously imitate. How can you be you, the Libra that you were born to be, while you may be attracting these aggressive partners where it's easy to sort of just follow them? Yeah, I appreciate the assertiveness of my partner, but I have an assertiveness too. You guys have an assertiveness too, even though you're a sweet Libra. You have your own, and because Libra is about aesthetics, maybe you maintain the way that you dress, the way that you look, the sweet part of who you are, even though you're dating these more aggressive people. You are really finding new ways to bring yourself to the forefront, to bring you to the forefront. Not everybody else. Everybody else comes second. What are the new ways that I can show up? And once I do show up, I don't have to, it doesn't have to be either or, because as you know better than anybody, it's all about balance. I don't have to be myself and, you know, say forget everyone else. And I don't have to completely mold and turn into other people and forget who I am. We are thinking with the Mercury about how to strike the balance, Libra, between ourselves and the other. This is very beautiful for you guys. Without getting too much into astrology, just thinking about yourself, thinking about others, and thinking about balance is how you're going to draw the most wisdom from this eclipse, and you will really be feeling it. Maybe you feel it in existing relationships, or maybe you are starting relationships where you are being tested by the universe to see if you've learned this lesson. So just try your best, and I think it should work out. This is a pleasant eclipse. You have Venus, which is not only your chart ruler, but the ruler of this eclipse. And it's transiting the second house. You are really going to want to buy some luxury items this time. Some tourist-like items. Things that feel good. A new wardrobe. You might want to give yourself a makeover. Buying luxury items. Jewelry, watches, perfume. And I say makeover because you have this new energy in the first house. Maybe you are, you know, just like a soccer mom. And you're like, no, I want to get my nails done and I want to kind of spice it up. I want to get back into myself, this new energy into my appearance, my body. And the Venus here is definitely wanting to spoil ourselves with that terrain energy. You may also really enjoy building up your credit. Um, beauty is coming to our finances, making, uh, having some savings, stuff like that. Maybe investing a little bit. 
putting things away, having that financial cushion definitely makes you guys feel good. I would say being creative or artistic at this time is bringing you money with the Venus in the second house. Anything you do creative beauty wise is going to bring you money and you have this new energy and Libra in the first. I would say if you're a makeup artist or you're involved in the arts or creativity in any way, this is a great time to try to make some extra money, bring some extra income in. You have Mars in Cancer, which is transiting the 10th house right now. So you are putting a lot of energy into your work. Um, and into your career, which is at odds with you putting energy into yourself. You're like, hey, this is me, this is I, like the solo thing. And then your career is more like an intangible thing that we work on. Mars transit in the 10th, you could also be fighting a little bit with people at work. And this is really at odds with what you're feeling right now. Maybe there's a lot of tension at work. Maybe you're like, look, I'm sorry, you're having a bad day, but I don't feel like that when I walk in here. And so that's why these two things are not getting along. Again, as you guys know better than anyone, it's a call on this balance. The wisdom of the eclipse, how can I be peaceful and pleasant even when things around me are not? And when you keep that energy in mind, I would say that you will be able to get through the tough times of your Mars in the 10th and that the, square, the squaring energy will really be died down because you are just being such a pleasant Libra. Not a people pleaser and not a pushover, but pleasant and diplomatic is the word. You have the Uranus in the transiting your eighth house right now, and it's not in a direct like aspect as far as an opposition with Venus, but there is something unexpected going on. You could have an unexpected tax bill. You could have an unexpected inheritance. There's something unexpected with shared resources, but something it could be pleasant because Venus is saying that there's a time that money is kind of good, but this is also sort of in an opposition. It's not a degree opposition, rather a sign opposition. So it could be something that makes your Venus like a little bit knocked off of her square. Something unexpected is happening with you, within you emotionally where you are trying to understand how you want to process things emotionally, uh, something sudden around your feelings maybe there are feelings that you have for someone or that someone has for you that are suddenly go cold or maybe someone comes out of nowhere and they express intense feelings for you that are very hot um, maybe you are rethinking i'm sure you are rethinking how you feel about your sexuality and your intimacy and how much you want to share with others your emotions are like for this period of time this is not a quick transit either so i would say again be peaceful be logical be rational and honor yourself and i think you'll be fine during this eclipse and i'm excited to hear what you guys have been experiencing during it because this eclipse is really for you scorpio this is happening in your 12th house this eclipse this eclipse is calling on us to think about ways to strike a balance, Mercury and Libra, between wanting to be this Piscean part of ourselves and actually being grounded in reality. There are new ways and new energy that you're bringing to your 12th house. You could be maybe meditating. Maybe you just had this feeling like, you know, I just kind of want to make wake up and meditate for 10 minutes a day, or I want to wake up and pray. You are wanting to bring some spirituality into your every day and it is new and it is strong maybe you just discovered astrology maybe you just discovered tarot or you will be there are new spiritual practices coming to you and you are enjoying them and they are pleasant but the south node is here but this is still a total solar eclipse is positive you are asking yourself how can i bring this into my life while still being grounded I don't got to pull tarot cards all, all morning or that's the only thing that I listen to on YouTube. It's just hours and hours of these videos. I can allow this to come into my life while still being the North Node in the Sixth, still being grounded in reality, still getting my to-do list done, still completing my tasks. Maybe while you're running errands, you allow yourself to listen to a spirituality podcast 
or um, could be a religious podcast. Maybe you're listening to those online sermons that people have. You are letting go of the idea that in order to be spiritual, you have to sacrifice your sixth house. Some people may feel like, hey, I can't make it to church every Sunday. But you put on a, a sermon that's recorded on YouTube or you attend virtually. You are allowing yourself to have both. I still have my everyday and I still have my spirituality. It could be that you let go of old ways of thinking about spirituality. Maybe you have been shunning these things or ignoring these impulses of wanting to explore. And now you're positive and now you're like, you know what? I do enjoy this. Libra, this is pleasant to me. I do like diving into my 12th house self, yoga, meditation, introspection, journaling, all of these kind of things bring me joy and they don't take away from me being practical. You have Venus in the first right now, so you are really loving on yourself right now. You are loving putting your blush on and your perfume. You are loving your body. You are loving yourself. You are coming out very Libra-like to everyone that you meet. You are coming out very Venus in the first to everyone that you meet. Great, great time for a makeover. I would suggest that everyone only do a makeover when Venus is transiting your first. If you wanted to change your hair color, if you wanted to get a new haircut or buy a new wardrobe, this is such a good time. You have such an eye for style now, but your own personal style, you're not gonna turn into a Libra per se, you're turning into a Venus and Scorpio in the first. Your powers of attraction are very, very strong right now. People could be very attracted to you and they might wanna come up and date you. You might be a lot of flirting or just flattery and compliments. People are just noticing how beautiful you are right now. And everyone, including yourself, is reveling in that. So this is not directly related to the eclipse, but it is on an important angle in your house, which is why I wanted to bring it up. You guys have Uranus transiting the seventh right now. And this is crucial. This is very, very crucial, especially since Venus is the ruler of the eclipse and the seventh house is related to relationships and blah, blah, blah. You could be having, you could be in a period of instability in your one-to-one -one relationships. Um, if you like that, then fine. But being a Scorpio rising, I know how you guys are. I have a Scorpio stellium. I have Venus in Scorpio. I know that you guys want some stability. I will call on you guys to go into your 12th house, to meditate, and ask yourself some deep questions without judgment. The 12th house is without judgment. What are some things that you have been doing that have led to the demise of the relationship? What are some things that the other person has been doing to lead in romantic relationships or even friendships to lead to the demise of the relationship? Who is most often ending the relationships, them or you? Why do you think that is? When Uranus is here, there is a feeling that we want to break free and we want to be rebellious and we want to be ourselves and we don't want anybody, any relationship to infringe on what we want to do. If you like watching football every Sunday for the whole day at the bar with your friends and your wife doesn't like it and maybe you've been appeasing her for all these years and maybe at this time in your life, you're like, look, I want to go do this. This is me and I don't want to give up me for you or for anybody and so a lot of relationships can crumble at this time because that's not really what it's about and that's not really how it works relationships are the Libra domain they're built on compromise I would ask you guys to think about how much do you value your independence and what part of your independence do you value so much and why do you feel like you have to give that up for a relationship what parts do you feel like you've been giving up for a relationship um and how can you have a relationship while still maintaining who you are this is a very critical transit very intense transit and it's something that you are really called to think upon right now but it does not always have to mean the end i have seen people say that there is a new way of interacting within their personal relationships. They, there was uh, something that I read on Linda Land where there's a married couple married for like 20 something years and the husband picked up a new hobby where he would go out fishing for a couple hours on you know every other Saturday on his own. 
So it doesn't have to be a complete breakdown. There is a rebellion, but rebellion doesn't have to be negative. It's just the way in which we are going out and doing something that's just for us, even though it's not necessarily for the relationship. It doesn't have to break the relationship down. I would to ask you guys to think about the instability in your relationship that you've been feeling and where you feel like the root of it is. And I think that's very important for you right now with the eclipse being in Libra, the sign of relationships. One final keynote is also evaluating how you feel about boredom and spontaneity in these relationships. There is no one size fits all relationship. There is no one way to be. So just find the one that fits for you. Now, Sagittarius, this is my sign. You are guys are having this. Well, we are having this in our 11th house. This is asking you, there is new energy, new friends and new groups that are coming in. Sagittarius is about higher education. Maybe you're going back to school. Uh, I just started uh, at school myself. Maybe you are joining new groups on campus. Maybe you are meeting new people, new friends. Maybe you're getting introduced to friends of friends. And this is very exciting. This is very pleasing and pleasant to you. You are feeling very social at this time. You are having social graces within this you. And the people that you are meeting could be very Libra, like they are very receptive to you right now. You are be becoming a bit of a Libra when you're interacting with your friends and in these groups. The eclipse, however, because the south node is here, is asking us to think, Mercury, about new ways in the eclipse that we can have friends in our lives while not sacrificing who we are. We don't need to sacrifice the fifth house for the eleventh house, our ego, our individuality, and our creativity to be a part of a bigger group. Those two things are not mutually exclusive. The eclipse here is saying, yes, you can be a part of a group. You can be a part of something that is for a higher cause, a progressive group, something like that, while still maintaining who you are, while still have ind having individuality in the group. You don't have to sacrifice your individuality, your ego, your what makes you uniquely you, which is your fifth house, to be a part of a bigger group. You don't have to set your own personal label aside for the label of the group. It could be that you have been a part of a friends group where, and I've definitely experienced this, everybody in the group likes a particular activity and maybe you don't. And maybe you feel like you have to hide who you are, your fifth house, your ego, your essence, your son, in order to be a, to sacrifice that, in order to be a part of the group. And maybe this eclipse is saying, no, you can be a part of this group and you can have friends and you can also be your fifth house self and be who you are and be funny and speak up. Leo is about being loud, speaking up, speaking out. Leo, of course, always thinks they're right. Putting forth what you think is right into the world. It could be that you are letting go of friends or friendship groups that are not allowing you to do that. But it's okay because we have new energy, new friends, and new groups that are coming in. And you feel good about this. This is positive because it is allowing you to still maintain who you are while being in these groups. And so this is making you very happy. This is very pleasant. Any social thing you are invited to, any group that you can join, I would say definitely get out there right now. To add to this feeling of sociability, we have Jupiter in the seventh with the Sag Ascendant. This is really bringing a lot of dating opportunities to you guys. A lot of friendship opportunities to you guys a lot of people are just going to be approaching you not just because you have the eclipse in the 11th but the seventh house is the other the other sees you they think you're funny um there's going to be a lot of energy here big energy big expansion we already know and jupiter is our chart ruler so we already know how big this energy could be it expands so far and so vast it is the most expansive planet in the zodiac. You may be getting out on axed out on more dates than you ever thought. Get on those apps, get out there. You may be invited to things to meet friends more than ever before. Maybe there's just this incredible surge where guys or girls are just approaching you left and right. And it's conducive to you understanding about what it is to socialize, which is about what this eclipse is about, being in Libra. 
you get the practice from the universe with each of these people approaching you to socialize. And when you do, you strengthen the lesson of the eclipse, which is again, I can be friends and we can be cool and I can be a part of this group, but you still can see me and how I differ from the other people in the group because I'm still me. And it's nice. It's nice to have Jupiter here right now. We currently have Venus transiting Scorpio in our 12th house. So we may, our Venus is, she's taking a break right now. She just did her whole rounds throughout this, throughout the Zodiac. And she's like, look, I need to take a rest. She's in the house, she's got her curlers in, and she's got the shades drawn, and she doesn't really want to talk too much. She, you may be not really feeling your beauty so much, and that's okay, because it's about to cross until the first, that's fine, but you may just not be feeling super beautiful, you may be feeling a bit pessimistic about love, you may be feeling some unrequit unrequited love, I like to say unrequited, you might be like, loving somebody or crushing on somebody maybe they're in a relationship where they just don't really like you back that much your your venus you're not feeling very venusy and so it is really nice to have jupiter give you that push like to not only balance it but just take it way up and it's like no you are sociable and people do like you and they do see how venusian you are even if you can't really see it right now so i would say to all these sagittarius out there be patient socializing is the name of the game right now and you will be feeling better in the future about your love life and about dating and about your beauty you know everybody's beautiful god puts his paintbrush on everybody so says j cole so you will be remembering that in the next month or so so stay patient capricorn this eclipse is happening for you guys in the 10th house. So there is so much new energy, new positive things coming to your 10th house. Uh, most exciting could be a new job. It could be a new job offer, a promotion, it's something that is positive and pleasant. It could be a new boss that comes in or a new corporate takeover that you actually like. You actually get along with this person. This new dynamic in this new relationship is pleasant to you. You may enjoy going to work more. You may enjoy socializing at work more. People can see you more. This is a huge, the 10th house is our career, it's the top of the sky, the top of our chart. People could be seeing you more, seeing you more in a Libra light. You are acting like a Libra right now at work. They are feeling your energy. They are seeing how positive you are, how sociable you are. That could help get you ahead. You are having a good time with that. And because the South Node is here, you are letting go the idea that you must just work, 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 and that you can't see your family. This eclipse here is asking us to think, Mercury, about the balance that we can strike, Libra, between our work and our home and our family. Maybe it is that you've been wanting to spend some more time with your family, but you've been putting all this energy into work. And you're like, wow, how can I balance this polarity? If you think, you may say, hey, to your boss, I'll stay an extra hour on Friday, but I'm not going to be answering emails over the weekend. That's family time. Or you could tell your family, hey, uh, daddy's got to work from 4 to 6 p.m. every Sunday on this. But outside of those hours, it's all for you guys. So there is not this constant overlap or this constant push and pull that you might be feeling between wanting to pursue your professional life and wanting to maintain balance in the home with your family. It could be maybe that you go hybrid and you work from home a little bit more, like two days a week, and then you come into the office. There is new positive energy at work and it allows you, if you harness it, to also relate better to your family and to your home. And those are two very important parts of our lives. You also have Jupiter in the six right now. So you could be having two jobs. Maybe you have one job where you work at home or there could just be something going on in your everyday life that allows, that brings you some happiness. Maybe they allow you to transfer, like you have the same job, but you transfer to somewhere else that is I don't know, a bit closer to you, or maybe you're getting along with your coworkers better. Um, you also, your everyday is just becoming more pleasant and that is tied to your work. Your everyday could become more pleasant in the sense that you are focusing more on your health and that brings you some joy. 
Maybe you share that with your family. Maybe you like making smoothies in the morning or looking at the nutrition labels. Stuff like that brings you joy. Cleaning, cleaning a lot. I would say you might be cleaning your home a bit. You having this intense joy around cleaning and health and organization and structure and you have the north node transiting your home so maybe doing like a fall cleaning getting rid of a bunch of things you don't need organizing stuff is especially at home i would say would bring you guys a lot of joy right now you also capricorn have pluto in your first and it is about to go into aquarius it is transiting your first about to go into the second you are feeling intense themes of pluto around sexuality around death mortality and intensity you got pluto which is so intense like right there and it is about to cross into your second house it is crossing to my second house it is less intense in the second house in my opinion than it was in the first um but it will get ready as it approaches the second house you're going to start to feel it in the months leading up where you understand the impact that money has on your self-worth and your value I, I have a second house pluto video and i think that you guys should definitely go watch that because this is going to be a long transit um it's still an intense point transit but just not as intense as pluto in the first so yeah capricorns let me know how you've been balancing home and work and what lessons you've been learning from the eclipse here aquarius this eclipse of Libra is happening in your ninth house. So there's going to be a lot of new energy, a lot of new opportunity, positive change, and cool new stuff, cool energy that's happening in your ninth house. Now, it is back to school time. This is going to be happening in October, but maybe you're really feeling the joy of going back to school, starting at university, meeting teachers and students, and just being a part of this higher education system that you really like. Maybe you joined a new church. You could be in the same religion, but it could be that you have transferred to a different church uh, in your town. And there's all this new energy, this new people that are coming in. And you are figuring out how can I best socialize with them? You are enjoying socializing with these people. You are coming on very Libra-like in your church, in your school, and in foreign lands. Maybe there is new opportunity for you to travel. Definitely, I would think a group trip. Maybe it is your friends who say, hey, you guys, you want to go to the Dominican Republic? They are socializing with you and you they are enjoying socializing with you in this ninth house realm. So I would say explore these opportunities. If you're in school, join all the clubs you want to join. Talk to people, strike up a conversation, get out there are going to be noticing you right now it's a powerful energy and people there are noticing you if you want to travel abroad this is a great time great new opportunities are going to come up and the people abroad are going to notice you they're going to be like who is this foreigner that is so libra like so pleasant so graceful so charming and charismatic they are really drawn to you right now and in your church introduce yourself if you are if this applies introduce yourself because these things are going to go great right now you're going to make really great relationships and connections that last beyond the transit they last a while because this is a powerful new moon eclipse and what it is that you're leaving behind because the south node is here is the idea that you cannot still be active locally that you have to leave your neighborhood or your town maybe you've gone away to college a couple states away you can still be active and still value the third house, your siblings, your cousins, your neighbors, your neighborhood. There's spring break and Thanksgiving break and maybe you drive back home on the weekend. You're giving up the idea that you can only be in one place at, at one time. And, and, and in a sense you can, but in this technological world, you can still interact with both. You can be away at school and FaceTime your mom and your brother and your cousins. You can go back to your hometown and still be enrolled at your university. You can have these foreign adventures while still holding, calling a place home, your neighborhood, something that is familiar to you. The two are not necessarily mutually exclusive. You can travel back and forth. It's pretty easy to do in today's time. So you're letting go of the idea that it can 
be all or nothing, one or the other. You also may be learning a lot of new things. Maybe you're taking some new classes and it's really opening up your mind from high school. Maybe, you know, high school, I'd say it's like our third house, like elementary school, where you just learn Shakespeare and math and science and blah, blah, blah. There is new energy in your ninth house. Maybe you're taking classes that you never thought you would take and it's really expanding your mind. You can still enjoy and find value in the third house, but you can say, hey, there's this new stuff that I really enjoy learning about in my ninth house. You have Jupiter in the fifth right now. You are really, this is a fun, fun year for you guys. This is a fun time. I would definitely say get out there and do all the stuff you want to do. Go to all the parties. Uh, ninth house is also about adventure. And it doesn't, it's about foreign adventure, but it can be local as well. This, this is about just that feeling of feeling adventurous. So you've got Jupiter here and you are feeling very fun. Um, I also like to say, because Ninth House is the house of Sagittarius, that Ninth House people are very funny. So this is very Sagittarian. Like maybe they're, it's not necessarily the house of parties, but I think the energy does relate. Maybe it is also that you've been wanting to go to a concert. You've just been wanting to break out and have some fun and not be so at home because your Jupiter just came out of the fourth, not wanting to be so serious. You are wanting to have fun. You are wanting to go to parties. You are wanting to go to shows. You are wanting to dress up. You are wanting to create. And you are wanting to show yourself to the world because you really find joy in that. You really think that you're fun. You enjoy when other people think that you're fun. You enjoy having fun. There is an increased time for all things Leo and fifth house at this time, which I think just really plays on the ninth house and sense of adventure that you are feeling right now. Your eclipse is squaring the Mars in Cancer, which is transiting your sixth house right now. I would say that you may feel a great duty to just be practical and be responsible and kind of take care of the details and the nitty gritty. And your eclipse is like, no, like, forget all that. We need to go somewhere. We need to go out. We need to go to the Dominican Republic. And your Mars is like, but yeah, but the cable guy's coming uh, on the time where you're supposed to be on a trip. And so that's why these two planets are not getting along. You got the house of Sag and the house of Virgo, the house of big ideas and parties and the house of the nitty gritty details and being practical. But again, this eclipse is very positive. So this is a great time for you guys to think about, to, to call on the wisdom of the eclipse and to be calm, to be logical and be rational. Hey, uh, I want to go do this, but the practical, my Mars is saying, no, we got to be practical. We got to be over here. How can I strike that balance? Can I maybe leave the door unlocked for the person to come in and fix what they need to fix? Can I maybe reschedule? Can I maybe have a friend sit over there for me uh, while I go do this at a different time? Striking the balance. This is a very positive eclipse. And so even though there's a square, we can still find a way to get positivity and joy out of it and have a positive outcome. Um, and it is very fun because you guys have Venus in the 10th. This is a great time for getting along. It's a great time for putting yourself out there to your boss. Great time for getting putting yourself out there at work. Great time for getting along with your coworkers, even though that's more of a sixth house thing. Um, you've got Mars in the sixth right now, so there could be some arguing with them, but Venus in the 10th means that overall, when people see you at work, you are shining. Venus is sort of maybe calming down the argument, argument, argumentativeness of Mars in the sixth. Um, and you've got Pluto, which is in the 12th house right now, about to cross into the first. So it's just been an, an intense period in your life where you are going deep and learning about how intense the experiences can be when we go within ourselves. Um, the ninth and the 12th are squared theoretically, but I think that they have a lot of overlap and that they are very boundless and go very far. You've been going very deep into yourself for these past however many years it's been in your 12th house and that would depend on your, the actual degree of placement. And you are, and it has been intense and maybe unpleasant at times, but uh, you've learned a lot and grown a lot and, and gained the spirituality of that house. And the ninth house is all about spirituality. So uh, yeah, they square, but in my opinion, they get along. 
also you have and this is unrelated you have saturn and neptune which are transiting your second right now you are going through a period where you are evaluating your self-worth you are evaluating your finances you may be struggling a bit with your finances things may be tight things may be tense you may not understand why they're tight or tense um it, this will pass but it is up to you to be clear the, the saturn will pass um the neptune is going to be here for a while so i would encourage you guys to think about ways that you can be practical saturn is asking you to be practical and clear-headed and looking at these matters and I think that there's a lot for you to learn. Stay strong. The Saturn through the second is is always hard. I'm going through it right now. But you can do it. Um, and, and just know that it will pass. And last but not least, we have Pisces. This eclipse in Libra is happening in your eighth house. This is not a um, angular house, but this is a very intense house, very deep house. You are really, really feeling this eclipse. However, your eight, this is happening in Libra. Libra is very pleasant and very light, so that adds something nice. There is new energy and new experiences within your eighth house. This can be a new opportunity or new opportunities to share, to share an intimacy with people. And that can be sexual. There can be new sexual experiences, new sexual partners, new sexual things that you try. But it can also be emotional maybe you've shared you're starting to share this new energy with a new person you are telling them about yourself you know when you're dating somebody you tell them about your childhood and your trauma and the good things and the bad things and whatever maybe you're sharing that maybe you've been dating someone for a while and it's been surface level and you find joy now and pleasantness now and being like you know what i want to tell you a little bit more about who i am i want to give you a little bit more insight into me into my deep emotions into my inner workings maybe that's what's going on right now and you're enjoying it you're thinking about new ways how can i share and be intimate with others in multiple different ways you can also be thinking of there could be new opportunities to share as far as finances maybe you are with someone and you guys say hey let's open a joint bank account so we can save for a house maybe there are some benefits that come through because this is positive this is a positive eclipse that comes through in the eighth and the south node is here so maybe you are letting go old ways of thinking about the eighth house that haven't been serving you maybe you've been very rigid and not sharing and this eclipse is teaching us like no that's not helpful we need to share we need to be open maybe you have been closing yourself off from sharing parts about yourself with a partner and maybe finally you realize like, no, I can let that go and share. Maybe you've been being tight fisted with a partner and not sharing your finances and, or the opposite could be true that you have been sharing. You are letting go an old way of sharing however that is, either because you've not been sharing or you've been sharing too much. And the North Node is in the second for you guys. So you are thinking of new ways to balance, thinking Mercury of new ways, Eclipse and Libra to balance what you share with others and what you keep for yourself. The second house is also about our income and it's about our values. Maybe you are saying, look, my wife is spending too much when she goes to the mall for my bank account. I love my wife, but very pleasantly, I'm going to have a little separate account for myself. We're going to think of a new way to do this so that I can, as a North Node, honor my second house and how I want to do my own personal finances and my second house thing. Or maybe you realize that if, hey, if we share something, that is going to, if you weren't sharing and then you maybe there's a newly married couple and they have a joint bank account, we realize, hey, that leads us to a greater future of financial stability. So I ask you guys to think about ways in which you've been sharing, 
yourself, your body, your money, your, your emotions that are, that have not been working for you? And what new things have been coming to you? What new feelings and thoughts have been coming to you about ways that you can share? And how does that affect your finances positively? That is what this is asking you to do. The eighth house has a lot of different manifestations. So it's hard to say exactly which one, but the theme of sharing um, and, and resources and shedding the old way and doing a new way is something that is making you guys very happy. And it is something that definitely could be about marriage or relationships because this eclipses, uh, this eclipses in Libra. And it is definitely something that is pleasant and something that's collaborative because it is in Libra. We have Venus, which is the, the dispositor of the eclipse. And it is in the ninth house. I would say um, you are maybe having some joy around going on a trip. You could meet someone on a trip. It could be that you and your spouse revitalize a love. There is the eclipse of Libra and Venus in the ninth. Maybe you say, hey, let's put $100 a month into an account. Let's build some stability, a share, and build some stability so that we can go on the trip that we've been wanting to do. Maybe it is that you and your partner have been fighting a little bit. And all you really need is a nice vacation or something to take you guys out of that. I see that that's happening right now. Um, if you are at school right now, or if you are in a religious church, I would say socializing right now or meeting someone is very possible for you. This eclipse is squaring Mars in Cancer, which Mars is in your fifth house. You really have a need right now to be yourself, to be dominant and assertive. Very Mars and Leo energy. Very much I'm not wrong. Very much I'm going to do it my way. Very much me, 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 I, 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 because I'm doing it the best. And that is squaring the eighth house, which is about shared intimacy and sharing. And just the whole idea of Libra in general, which is about the other. So this eclipse, in order to um, alleviate the tension from the square, we need to uh, call on the wisdom of the eclipse. The eclipse is asking us to find ways to be collaborative and peaceful and compromising while still honoring ourselves in that compromise, making sure we get our side of the compromise. If you can do that with other people, then this will calm your Mars down and this will allow your Mars to assert its ego and to show off like it wants to do right now without totally wrecking the um, lessons of the eclipse that we are supposed to get you have saturn and neptune which are transiting your first this is an intense time for you guys pisces saturn transiting the first you may be feeling the effects of life on your body no matter how old you are you might be feeling like have I been taking care of myself? Have I been doing the right thing? If you've been doing the right thing and you already know what I'm going to say, it's not going to be that bad. You haven't been doing the right thing, like most of us, like myself included, because I just went through this a couple years ago. It will start to show on you. You will start to see the effects of how you've been treating your body. So you really want to pay special attention to that right now. The eighth house is also about death and mortality. So maybe you have new ways of looking at death and looking at mortality like, hey, I gotta stop smoking. Um, Saturn and Pisces is all about stopping of, of substances. Maybe you realize, like, look, I gotta stop smoking or drinking or I'm not gonna live too long. That's huge for you. Um, but Neptune is here. Neptune has been here for a while. And it could be that Neptune is confusing you, confusing the way in which you should go or how you should deal with this. Um, Neptune also, you know, Neptune likes to turn up. Neptune likes to get high. So maybe you're like, what do I do? Why does my throat hurt? These two energies, Neptune and Saturn are very opposite. And Pisces is, you guys are very confused. And that's okay. But these could be things that you're thinking about right now. 
Um, you are called with the North Node in Aries to think about your self-worth and how much you value yourself. One of the ways we can think about how we value ourselves is how we value our body. So I would challenge you guys to really think about how you've been treating your physical body right now. Um, so yeah, that's all I have for you guys. This is my first video doing a full moon transit and not doing a natal placement. Please tell me what you thought and please tell me what you would like to see more of in these videos, what you'd like to see me expand on. Let's talk about this eclipse coming up. Um, and let's get ready for it because it's going to be a positive one. And I'll see you guys in the next video.